So I guess um, through uh, this exact uh, it, uh, part of fiction that uh, uh, Homer used to convey his own vision of his own uh, messianism, we are reaching the realm uh, of fiction and thus we uh, turn to our colleague and friend Arthur Blind from the University of Dykes, who is actually going to host a whole bunch of students of the organism in uh, less than 10 days uh, for the annual conference of the Utopian Studies Society, whose current president is, as you know, Gregory Glaze. And that uh, uh, conference is going to uh, talk about uh, utopia and solidarity. Today, uh, Arthur Blaine is uh, talking about utopian fictions before and after revolutions. Thank you so much. To uh, some extent, uh, what I want to talk about is uh, kind of a frame to the breaks that we use. Uh, I'm going to uh, finish the way the breaks started. I'd like to start with a piece of wisdom. It's, it goes like this. What is the object of revolution? Sure, to make people happy. And of course, that's not produced by me, but this is William Morris, who's from Melbourne. It's one of which I'm facing the problem with, uh, which I'm not so easily going to tell. But to continue, the question what would happen to the model of revolution, appearing in the opening paragraph of William Morris's News from Nova, perfectly embodies the relationship between utopia and revolution in utopian fiction. Seen from the perspective of utopia, revolution is simply one of the historically variable ways of instituting the idea of social, political, and economic order. In fact, four basic models of implementing the utopian system can be distinguished. One, the founding father, or other fathers, and especially, since the second half of the 19th century, the founding mothers. The exodus model, a group of people dissatisfied with the existing conditions decide to depart from their native country or are forced to leave by the oppressive government or foreign invaders. Three, the parliamentary way, the changes are reflected by the existing parliament or a specially appointed general assembly of elected representatives or all the people. The revolutionary way, the radical change is brought about by masses spontaneously or inspired by a charismatic leader. In actual practice, as the Soviet Union not follows, uh, these four types uh, only very rarely appear in a uh, pure form. In most cases, at least two of them drive some. The oldest and in many ways predominant mode of instituting the ideal order is the act of a single individual, the founding father, the planner and the chief executive of the old and promising change. This is a quotation from <coughs> Mars Utopia. But Eutopus, who as a conqueror gave the island its name and who brought the root and last of people to such a perfection of culture and humanity as makes them now superior to almost all other mortals, gained the victory at his first and at his very first landing. He then ordered the excavation of 15 miles on the side where the land was connected continent and caused the sea to flow around the land. He said to the task not only of the natives, but to prevent them from thinking the labor of his grace is all soldiers also. As you can see, they have a radical gesture which is not only in terms of uh, uh, changing the political system, but also in terms of the change of the physical structure of the area which uh, has become uh, this domain of the ideal law. Now, the short passage again characterizes the relationship between the individual instituting, initiating the change, the radical character of the change itself, and the status of the people actually implementing the change, who appear here uh, as a very mention instrument of accomplishing one person's designs. The ultimate agency of the Elizabeth, even with regard to the symbolic act of renaming. Uh, 
can is actually emphasized in the, the most recent translation of Utopia, which disambiguates the traditional version and reads as follows. King Eutropus conquered the island and named it after himself. I think it's a very nice translation of this that makes quite clear that he is the agent, he is the sort of the ultimate agent. This is Clarence Miller's translation, by the way. Now, afterwards, uh, uh, perfect founding fathers proliferate. The implementation of ideal order in the Atlantis was initiated by King Solomon, who had a large heart, his scrutable for good, and was called then to make his kingdom and people happy. And having achieved this goal, decided to give perpetuity to that which was in his time so happily established, by drastically restricting all contact with the outside world. That's uh, uh, in Atlantis. James Harrington, the Commonwealth of Oceania, is dedicated to Walter Cromwell, whose hopes for future actions are performed by his fictional avatar, Lord Arkham, who deposed the parliament and having been made the sole red legislator of Oceania by the universal suffrage of the army, becomes alongside of Moses and Leviticus the first legislator to have introduced or erected an entire commonwealth at once. At the opposite end of the political spectrum, the dedication of uh, Mr. R. H.'s sequel to Baker's New Atlantis to King uh, uh, Charles II calls for the adoption of the proposed model in the text and suggests the intended founding father of this utopia found true. Now that you may really become our, our Solomon, our second Justinian and respirator of our own source of laws and liberties to the re-enthroning yourself in full glory to the re-establishment of our despised church and to the advance of our public peace, welfare, and prosperity of all your faithful subjects. Now, the original law giver of Gerania, who was taken from 1675, at first thought to be an English, to be an Indian Brahmin turns out to be none other than Homer himself, who, apart from providing the natives with a detailed set of laws regulating all aspects of life, upon his departure back to Greece, prophesied the downfall of human gods and declared the true God manifesting himself to the world who would teach men the way to serve him. In the free state of Poland, the new superior order is initiated by the excellent Aristos, who, having been elected the new king, refuses to accept the crown and successfully calls for the establishment of a parliamentary republic. Jacobus Veritas, the future lawgiver of the island of Veritas, having become displeased with the vices of the people, left Europe to find a different way of life. In the course of his voices, he landed upon an island where from the superstitious custom of the people who has chosen their king. Finding that they are simple, their tempers docile, their genius quick and inquisitive, he determined to put in force the scheme he had entertained from his youth, and on his deathbed he had the satisfaction of knowing himself uh, beloved by a nation whose happiness was received from him. If Peter Williams and Crusoe Richard Davis, the idea of order, paid in the tomb of, no, again, obscure 19th century text, the ideal order, based on purified and simplified model of European civilization, is introduced by two castaways who impose it upon societies existing in the state of nature, literally in that case, uh, as the further inhabitants of that ascension, as I calls it. Uh, do not even possess a proper language. In Thomas Spencer's sequel to Gardner's Travels, the ideal order is initiated by two children, Bill Hebron and the King, who, with the cooperation and support of the people, manage to nationalize the land of property, forests, mines, etc., all of which are taken over by parish. The application of these measures to the institution of the perfect order described in a pilot work. New liberties sprang up and displayed itself like a pure life in paradise. The dews of heaven came upon it, and the earth offered all nourishment. Its trunk was reared in strength and beauty, its branches spread over the land, its root was deep in virtue, on its leaves were sciences. The 
The people were happy, also with well pampered shade, and the fruit of glory dropped upon them. A similar revolution takes place in the country of Mercolia, adjacent to them. Here, Jovilo, a lad of 14, manages to convince his countrymen to leave all their money in heaps so that all the heathen people who uh, will kill each other for it, thereby opening the way for the institution of the perfect system based again on common property. Karl Kraus explains this predominant tendency of giving the task of inventing and implementing the ideal order to a single powerful individual by carrying the emerging alliance between post feudal princes and kings and the rising bourgeoisie. He provides a more elaborate explanation when discussing Thomas More as a European socialist. As yet, there was no party, no class to champion socialism. The decisive political power on which the state seemed to depend were the princes. Then, a young and in a sense a revolutionary element without defined traditions. Why should not one of them be converted to communism? If such a prince desired, he could enforce communism. No princes of desire, the poverty of, of the people was unlawful. So thought more, and from his standpoint, he was impelled to make an attempt to convert a prince. But he was by no means deceived as to the hopelessness of this task. He knew the princes of his time too well. Alternatively, the introduction of the figure of the founding father of the Ethiopian state can be seen as a manifestation of the tendency that uh, was quite common in the Renaissance of constructing the second world as a fictional hypothetical alternative to the existing one. As exemplified, for instance, by Robert Burton playing the part of the creator, delineated in the practice of Democritus Jr. to his uh, to the anatomy of now. I will yet to satisfy and please myself, make a utopia of my own, a new Atlantis, a poetical commonwealth of my own. In which I will freely domineer, build cities, make laws, statutes, as I use myself. Why may I not? Victoria was out of the place, etc. You know what liberty poets have ever had. Uh, a fusion of those two approaches, the one that's uh, so suggested by uh, some extent by uh, Council, but also implicit in all those utopias which present this uh, single uh, uh, lawgiver, can be found in uh, Immanuel Kant. This is going to be the slightly longer quotation, but it's quite essential. It is certainly pleasant to think about state constitutions that correspond to the demands of reason, especially in matters of right. But it is inappropriate to propose them seriously, as it is punishable to incite the people to do away with an existing constitution. Plato's Atlantis, Mos Utopia, Harrison's Oceana, and Alessia Veranda have all eventually been put on stage, but have never been tried in reality, with the exception of Cromwell's failed monstrosity of the Republic. The creation of these states is much like the creation of the world. Uh, no one was present when it happened, nor would anyone be present, for otherwise he would have to have been his own creator. To hope that a state constitution of the kind of which we are speaking here could ever after however much time they completed, it is a sweet dream. But, but to continue the approach such a state is not only required, but rather to the extent that it is consistent with moral law, a duty, not for the citizen of the state, but for the head of the state. Very often, closely connected to the key role of the founding father is the Exodus model, in which the origins of the Utopian state replicate the motive of the flight from the simple and oppressive world, passing after the biblical pattern of excellence. So the citizens of Campanella, the, the city of the sun, came from India, many of them being philosophers who fled before the depredations of the Tatars and other plunderers and tyrants, and they resolved to live in a philosophical community. The ancestors of the inhabitants of Heliopolis, which is the voyage of Tatar, left Athens after the death of Alexander when his courtiers gained power and began to govern the country according to, uh, not according to his intentions. They took their families along with them 
to settle themselves in some part of the world which they could find more than obvious for them, and that to live under laws which themselves were the first founded, or which themselves they were the first founded. Because they were not able to endure the tyranny of the new growers. The ideal community on the island of Content, 1309, was established by a poor gentleman who forsook his native country with his children, friends, and relations to save their lives in a time of rebellion and cruelty. The plan initiated by two individuals who personally had selected 150 poor, laborious, and industrious families, some husbandsmen, bricklayers, carpenters, blacksmiths, 200 orphans of both sexes and different ages, two ministers, persons of great piety and extensive virtue, ethical and humble, of uh, universal charity and benevolence, and the text presents the purpose of the actual purpose of the institution in the new order, including the proceedings of the original assembly, which democratically adopted the future constitution. Uh, the inhabitants of Soterians, the peculiar text, uh, in the, 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 the capacity and extent of human understanding, came from the province of uh, St. John near Korea, converted to Christianity by the disciples of St. John, and then having been persecuted by pagans, pagans they abandoned their native country. The exodus was organized by a worthy Christian monkey, Kia, who purchased 20 ships to carry 300 families, two bishops, three presbyters, and one deacon. Among the parliamentary method of implementing the idea of order, uh, in, although the parliamentary method of implementing the idea of order is far less common in European fiction, its use often foregrounds the pragmatic function presenting in detail the actual legislative process of passing the laws of the utopian state, which are presented uh, in extension. In the author's preface to Macario, an appeal is made to the English Parliament to adopt his proposal. I humbly desire that this honorable assembly will be pleased to make use of anything your it contain if it, if it may stand with their uh, pleasure. Also, as a part of the dialogue, a part of the dialogue is devoted to the discussion of the ways in which England may take advantage of the superior laws and measures adopted in Macau. Skip the good days, which is rather boring. Uh, such is also the character of the political and economic transformation described in Thomas Spencer's A Supplement to the History of Robinson Crusoe. The island having become very densely populated, private ownership of them made it impossible for the better half of the rising generation to get a vacant spot to live on, which, which led to serious disturbances until the problem was solved by a general assembly of all inheritance who decided to abolish private property. The proposed mode of implementing the ideal system by means of majority vote is, at least theoretically, applicable to the author's world, contrary to the methods suggested in the majority of other utopian texts in which the ideal system is imposed from above by an enlightened ruler or begins with the establishment of a small community by a group of refugees. Although the Exodus model can be regarded as practical, especially for considering the rise of colonization in the early Roman period, it ultimately produces an alienating effect that can hardly be applied to the existing European conditions, and the idea of a new beginning elsewhere appears at best as an opportunity for the select few. For utopian fictions, the importance of the French Revolution consisted in initiating a new mode of implementing the idea of order. It also inspired various individuals to undertake more or less successful practical attempts at establishing ideal communities. Having been named utopian socialists and the movement itself utopian socialism, they became the object of Marxist and Engels' critical attention in the Communist Manifesto, where, where, they, where, where they identified its origins in the underdeveloped state of the class struggle. For Marx and Engels, utopian socialists want to improve the condition of any member of society, even that of the most favored, so that they habitually appeal to society at large without distinction of Class, named by preference to the ruling class. The fantastic <coughs> of society which they depict correspond to the 
first instinctive yearnings of the emerging proletariat. But the main value of utopias consists in their critical element as they attack every principle of existing society which contributes to the enlightenment of the working class. However, all the practical measures proposed in them, such as the abolition of, uh, of the distinction between town and country, of the family and of the wage system, the proclamation of social harmony, the conversion of the function of the state into mere superintendence of production, which points solely to the disappearance of the class antagonism, which were at the time only just cropping up, are of a purely utopian character, say Marx and Engels. The importance of utopias decreases in line with the development of class struggle, to the extent that the fantastic, uh, the, the fantastic standing in part from the contest, these fantastic attacks on it lose all practical value and all theoretical justification. Consequently, if the originators of these systems were, in many respects, revolutionary, their disciples had, in every case, formed mere reactionary sects, so says the Communist Manifesto. Now, going back, like half a century, the first English text to present the utopian state brought about by a popular revolution is Memoirs of Panetti. The work depicts the happy land of Makar in the aftermath of the revolution, overthrowing monarchy and aristocracy, and introducing the republican system based on community of property. Here again, the figure of the founding father appears as the indispensable leader of the revolution. Euthus, a man whose purity of morals and uprightness of conduct can only be equal by his judgment, experience, and sagacity. Which qualities are reflected in the lines of his countenance, revealing the effects of a deep study and penetrating discernment, as well as the gravity in his demeanor that brought to mind the inflexible Cato. A striking, a striking different approach, echoing Marx's and Engels' views on the character of revolution, appears in many late 19th and 20th century utopias, in which the introduction of ideal order is presented as a result of a violent revolution or a series of revolutions occasioned by an acute awareness of the dispossessed social groups of classes of their true position, without, however, associating it with any figure of the founding father or mother, such is the case in some of the most important terms of the period. Although the exception of balance, the economic factors may have blessed a secondary role. Particularly interesting in this respect is Ursula Greens, the dispossessed, in which the establishment of the ultimate future of the society of Anaris involves, in a sequential order, the founding mother, the violent revolution, and a peaceful exodus, followed by the establishment of a quasi anarchistic society. Now, to go back full circle to uh, Thomas More, a very interesting utopia was uh, contained in a novel by. Special level entitled Neuland. I won't go into the parallels with how Neuland, but it was essentially towards the end of the book, the protagonist discovers or visits a community, a utopian community in Argentina, which was built on the uh, site of a previous Jewish uh, settlement. And the, the aim of that community is precisely not so much to expand or to head a utopian community, but it's much the same as uh, one of the aims of most utopians. Uh, in the text itself, where it's, it's a nursery of useful and correct institutions. And the aim of that community is to train people who are willing to spread those ideas and, as it were, uh, make that certain uh, utopian ideal be implemented in India throughout the world. Now, paradoxically, in the self descriptive discourses generated by real life revolutions in the 20th century, the figure of the founding father. And emphasize the father again, returns with a vengeance, overshadowing Marxist theories, dialectical materialism, the predominance of matter over the mind, the class struggle, the role of the masses, or the incompatibility of the base and uh, the base and the superstructure. So that all we are left with are Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Kim Sang, Fidel Castro, and a host of other large minorities. Thank you.